In the 1900s, children were seen as ideal migrants. They were easy to control, adaptable to new conditions, and unquestioning. The children were not seen as a threat to those already working in Australia. The government considered it a form of social welfare, a way to increase the population in the years of low birth rates. The introduction of British youth was supported by both the Australian and British governments, as well as many community-based organisations. The Dreadnought scheme began as a fundraiser to assist the purchase of a Dreadnought battleship for Great Britain. It continued as a fundraiser to assist young males to migrate to Australia, hence the name Dreadnought Boys. In 1883, the first of Dr Bernardo's children came to Australia to live on a sheep station. However, it wasn't until 1921 that the Bernardo's immigration scheme began officially. Bernardo's, the children's charity, is one of the largest and oldest child welfare organisations in the world. Thomas Bernardo was born in Dublin in 1845. In 1866, he studied in London to become a doctor, with the intention of going to China as a missionary. Dr Bernardo never went to China after starting his work with the children in the East End of London. By the time he died in 1905, Dr Bernardo's network of homes had cared for 8,000 children. Dr Bernardo's British children started to come to Australia in 1883. They continued to come, except for a brief period during the Second World War, when Bernardo's Australia concentrated on providing for former Bernardo's children who were now in the war services. Bernardo's Australia, the children's charity, grew and eventually branched out into different areas of child welfare in Australia. In 1909, the Rhodes Scholar Kingsley Fairbridge founded the Child Emigration Society. His aim was to build large farm schools in the Dominions. In 1912, Fairbridge started a farm school near Perth. The Fairbridge farm schools were one of the largest and longest running farm schools in Australia. Before 1914, the farm had settled 1,787 boys. These boys were hand-picked and were trained in agricultural tasks over a period of six months to a year. With shipping a little easier, Australia is getting more and more welcome migrants who are greeted by familiar sights and sounds. It's not so unlike the old country after all. These children, mostly orphans from English cities, are happy to give a reporter early impressions of their new homeland. They are soon on their way to the Fairbridge farm at Molon, one of a series of farm schools founded by the late Kingsley Fairbridge, a Rhodes Scholar who conceived the idea whilst at Oxford 40 years ago. School tuition is the most important part of the children's day, but a lot of their time is spent in the fields. Molong consists of 1,600 acres of pasture and cultivation in the heart of New South Wales' best agricultural country. Each of 11 cottages has a cottage mother or guardian who gives her wards the care and affections of a real mother in a real home. Medical attention is rarely necessary in this healthy atmosphere. He's trying his best to be a Spartan. Older boys get practical experience in farm management. Boys probably born within the sound of bow bells now hear cow bells and know what to do at milking time. The 200 children on the farm absorb most of the milk. There's all round tuition in elementary handling of livestock and the lessons literally start on the ground floor. Dipping some of the farm's thousand sheep is a rarely Australian job. Students leave the school on their 17th birthday, but still regard the farm as home, and some pupils even come back to be married. 
It's a gala day at Fairbridge, happy in its family atmosphere, happy in building a tradition in ten short years. Though scores of boys and girls have left, bigger numbers take their place, learning the age-old crafts of cultivation and enjoying the magic thrill of harvesting. Welcome young citizens of a new world, which will be all the better for their presence and their increasing knowledge. Murlong Farm School began with the bequest of Lady Northcott, who was the wife of Australia's third Governor General, Baron Henry Stafford Northcott. Lady Northcott was deeply impressed by the work of Kingsley Fairbridge and wished to further his work. She made provision for the establishment of another school in Australia in her will. The school was established in 1937 at Glenmore near Bacchus Marsh in Victoria. On the 26th of July 1937, the first small group of children came to start their new lives at the Northcote Children's Farm School. Northcote Children's Farm School took a total of 722 children. By 1944, both Fairbridge Farm School in Molong and the Northcote Farm faced closure because of high upkeep costs and staff shortages. To overcome this, the two schools combined. In the early 1960s, Northcote School took 260 children under the Fairbridge Family Scheme. This scheme cared for the children of English migrants. They were cared for in the beautiful rural surroundings that Northcote offered until their parents found work and accommodation. The children were looked after by a cottage mother who was called auntie or mummy by their charges. The role of the school changed over the years and the school began to care for Australian born children as well as child migrants or migrants children. In 1976 it was closed and sold off, the money returning to the Northcote Trust to assist underprivileged children. Many child migrant schemes began with good intentions, but time has shown that these children on the whole did not fare well. Problems arose because of poor training in childcare and a poor understanding of children's needs to belong. Unknown to most of the orphanages, these children were not strictly orphans and were denied knowledge of their parents and even their birth dates. Over the last few years, a great deal has come to light to Australia's shame about the cruel actions that took place in some of these homes. These children were brought out to Australia to be educated and given vocational training to advance Australia. Children were chosen on the basis of intelligence and fitness. However, they were sometimes poorly educated and given menial jobs. Organisations have been formed to cope with difficulties caused by mistreatment in homes and to help the child migrants find their real families back in England and in Australia. These organisations include Voices, Victims of Organised Cruelty, Exploitations and Supporters, the Child Migrant Friendship Society, the Child Migrant Trust and the International Association of Former Child Migrants and Their Families. Many children arrived together but never knew their brothers and sisters as they were separated on arrival in Australia. Bindoon in Western Australia was initially set up by the Christian Brothers to provide training for socially disadvantaged boys and orphans. It has in recent times come to light that many of these boys were subjected to physical and sexual abuse. The boys built this home with their own hands. The bad publicity and actions of some have made it easy to forget that most childcare institutions started with the noblest of intentions and that most workers were devoted to their charges. The idea of taking children away from their country of birth or away from a living relative has been discredited. Orphans are no longer institutionalised. Other programmes now provide a more manageable outcome for children of unfortunate situations. A different scheme